Great news, the sequencing data you've been waiting for is ready. It's right here in this compressed FASTA file. Wait, what's a FASTA file? And how do you open it? Let's get into it. This is Bioinformatics Briefly, where we explain bioinformatics concepts and show you how to use bioinformatics tools. Of course, the most important output of a sequencing run is the sequence itself. But by itself, a sequence is just a long string of nucleotides or amino acids. You need more information, at least a name for the sequence. Most organisms have more than one chromosome, and even some viruses have multiple segments. How can you tell where one sequence ends and the next one starts? You could store each chromosome as a separate file and name them chromosome 1, chromosome 2, etc. But that could get unwieldy, especially if you're sequencing hundreds of samples and need to provide additional information. The next question is, how will you store the sequences? You could store them in a Word file or maybe even Excel, although I wouldn't recommend it. Trying to work with a multi-gigabyte Word file would be frustrating at best, and there's really no benefit to doing it that way anyway. The reason is that programs like Word and Excel store a lot of formatting information, such as font size and color, but you really don't need formatting information, just the sequence itself. What you need is a text editor. In fact, Windows already comes with a simple text editor, Notepad. Notepad can open any kind of text file, including uncompressed FASTA files. In bioinformatics, most files are just text files, and the file extension is used to tell you what kind of file it is. For example, instead of a FASTA file, you'll probably get your sequencing data as a FASTQ file, which is similar to a FASTA file, but also contains some information about sequencing quality. You might also run across SAM files, which contain information on aligning sequencing reads to a known reference sequence, as well as VCF files, which contain information used in variant calling. Of all these file types, FASTA is probably the simplest and most common. The name comes from a sequence alignment program from 1985 called FASTA. FASTA files contain two types of information, the name of the sequence and the sequence itself. The first line starts with a greater than symbol and contains the name of the sequence and the description. This can be in almost any format, but NCBI identifiers provide the useful standards and include the database source, such as GB for GenBank, EMB for Ensemble, and REF for REFC, followed by the accession and other optional fields. Each item is separated by a pipe, making it easy for computers to read. After the description line, the second line, as well as any following lines, are assumed to contain the sequence. FASTA files can contain DNA, RNA, or protein sequences. It should be pretty easy then to tell what kind of sequence is included in the file just by looking, right? Well, actually no, because in addition to A, C, G, T, and U, nucleic acid sequences can also use IUB, IUPAC codes to represent ambiguous bases. For example, you can use R to represent a purine, either A or G, and Y to indicate a pyrimidine, either C, T, or U. You can also use K, M, S, W, B, D, H, or V to represent other types of incomplete data. Much more commonly, however, N is used to represent any nucleic acid. You can also use dashes to indicate a gap, which means that FASTA files are also a useful way of storing aligned sequences. So that means, unless you're sure that no ambiguity codes were used, you might not be able to tell right away what type of file it is. FASTA files normally end with a dot .FASTA or .FA file extension. But to avoid confusion, or to provide more than one kind of sequence, you could use .FNA for DNA or RNA sequences, and .FAA for protein sequences. So if you wanted to, you could store all 249 million bases of human chromosome 1, our largest chromosome, in two lines of text. The advantage of that is that it's very easy to find a specific position in the sequence, but horizontal scrolling isn't very convenient, and some older programs have a limit in the number of characters on each line. So instead, most FASTA files use a fixed line width of about 70 characters, which makes it much easier to scroll through. On the other hand, this does make it harder to find a specific position in the sequence, and the line breaks make it harder to copy-paste the sequence. For this reason, a lot of tools have been designed to help you work with FASTA files. In fact, with these tools, most of the time, you don't even need to open the file in a text editor at all. This opens up some possibilities. Instead of storing each chromosome in a separate file, it would be nice to store all the chromosomes for an organism in one file. You can do this easily. In a multi-FASTA file, you can just append the files together, and each new sequence begins with a greater than sign. This way, you can create a separate file containing the complete sequence data for each organism, or you can make a database of viral or bacterial genomes, or make a list of primers or adapters. The downside of this is that it can quickly lead to huge file sizes. While you can open much bigger files in a text editor like Notepad than you can in Word, there is definitely a limit, such as 500 megabytes or one gigabyte. But with support from bioinformatics tools, 
You don't even need to open the file. In fact, the tools often don't even read the file fully into memory either, which means you can work with potentially huge files that would not even be able to fit into the computer's memory. How do these tools manage to do that? One way is to just read the file one line at a time, which is fine for simple tasks such as converting the sequence to uppercase or to lowercase. Linux command like tools like head, tail, and grep work in the same way, letting you scan through parts of the file regardless of how big the file is. For more complicated tasks, a tool like SAMTools FAIDX can be used to index the FASTA file. FAIDX creates a simple text file, usually in a file called the name of the FASTA file plus .fai extension that contains the start position of each sequence and the length of each line. This way, bioinformatics tools can extract a single sequence from the file by checking the index and figuring out the start and end positions of the sequence in the file and then reading only that region off of the disk. Since these tools free you from having to open the file in a text editor, it also means you can save space by compressing the file. You could zip the file to save space, but more commonly a tool called gzip is used. Gzip files in a .gz extension and are usually much smaller, but can still be used unchanged in most tools. Gzip files are ubiquitous in bioinformatics and are often used to compress FASTQ and BCF files as well, although SAM files are compressed using a different method and a sort of BAM files. In the realm of next generation sequencing, one of the most common uses of FASTA files is to use as a known reference sequence to which you can align your reads. Let's say you're sequencing hepatitis C virus. You go to the NCBI website and select the HCV genotype 1 RefSeq sequence. By default, the sequence is shown in GenBank format, which provides a great deal of information about the sequence, including the start and end positions of genes and protein products. But we don't need that for aligning reads, and actually most mapping tools only accept FASTA files anyway. If you click on the FASTA link, the sequence is shown in FASTA format, but you might not want to do that for very large sequences. Instead, click on the Send To link on the right and select File under Choose Destination. From there, select FASTA and select a name for the file. But what about if you already have the sequence, but it's in the wrong format? Let's say we only have the GenBank file available. Well, there are a few options, but the simplest approach is probably to use the MBOSS secret web tool on the EMBL EBI website. Here you select the sequence type, in this case RNA, and then choose the GenBank file to upload. In this case, we select GenBank entry format for input and FASTA format for the output. There are some other settings under more options, but the default should be fine for most purposes. Then click Submit and wait for the job to run. When it finishes, you can download the file. Here you can see that the accession is listed twice on the description line, so you might have to make some small adjustments, but overall this tool is very powerful and easy to use. If you need to do something more complicated, like extracting sequences, then you could try FABox or Galaxy. If you're comfortable with scripting, then you could use the FastX toolkit from the command line or use a programming library like BioPython or the Bioconductor BioStrings package in R. FASTA files are a simple but powerful way of storing sequence data. Easily readable both by humans and machines, they play a foundational role in bioinformatics. Stay tuned for future videos about other important file formats and tools used in analyzing biological sequence data. Thank you and see you in the next video.